Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Matt and today I'm here to bring you a comparison between two relatively popular Wi-Fi 6 routers. The Asus RTAX82U, which is a standalone traditional router, and the Netgear Orbi, which is a mesh system, which can have up to one or two satellites in your home, right? This video is going to be a bit longer than the ones I normally do. So as always, if you don't wanna watch the entire thing, Here's the synopsis slash my final thoughts. This is an absolutely incredible router and I cannot recommend buying it enough if you don't need a mesh system. And that's gonna be the crux of the entire video. Do you actually need mesh or not? Because I was someone who was under the impression that mesh was best. If you're gonna go and buy a router by the most badass system out there, which nowadays are mesh systems, Linksys, Netgear, Asus, everybody has their own version of them. They're expensive. They're gonna work over 90,000 square feet, exaggeration obviously, but still they tout themselves as being kind of the, the top of the line. But the deal is, as I learned the hard way, mesh systems can be overkill and even detrimental in certain home sizes and configurations. And traditional routers aren't as crappy as they used to be. You know what I mean? The last traditional router I had was back in 2016 uh, when I moved into a house and it just, didn't cut it anymore, right? That was back when they were small, they didn't cover, they couldn't go through walls very well. And that's when I bought my first mesh system. Uh, it was the Eero back then called Whole Home Wi-Fi. And I just kind of evolved from there until I downsized my home and found out that, no, this is perfect for me. So my recommendation for anybody out there who's curious about which one you need, I would definitely try a traditional router first and see if that works for you. Now, if you live in a 4,000 square foot home with a ton of dead zones, sure, mesh is gonna be the way that you need to go, all right? But for everybody else out there who's even watching this video and considering it, I would recommend going somewhere like Best Buy or Amazon, whatever it may be, buy small and work your way up, all right? A top of the line mesh router, you can be looking at 600 to $800, right? This one I think is now down to either four or 500 this costs 200 bucks and it does a better job in my 1,850 square foot home and 10 devices than this thing ever did, all right? So the video is gonna be broken down into a bunch of different parts uh, so that you can skip around, all right? I'm gonna be comparing these things directly. So I'm gonna compare their physical appearance slash build quality. I'm gonna compare their setup, installation, the software, the performance, and then just kind of do a whole wrap up of what even prompted me to buy this because I bought this back in September of 2020, made a review video about it, gave it a, uh, a glowing recommendation at the time. And so why did I move away from that to this? And, and then just kind of give my final thoughts on, on mesh versus standalone. So let's go ahead and hop into it, all right? Physical appearance and build quality, in my opinion, should be pretty low on the totem pole and what influences your decision to buy a router. Because at the end of the day, you should be setting these things up putting them somewhere and leaving them there, right? So the durability factor, I don't think needs to be very high. You shouldn't be tossing these things around. They shouldn't be falling off of anything, right? But aesthetics might matter to you, especially when it comes to a mesh system, because when it comes to this, you're gonna have your main router in whichever room you have your uh, internet coming into, right, from your ISP, but you're gonna have to put your satellite or satellites in different rooms, whether that's your kitchen, your bedroom, upstairs, downstairs, and so you're gonna wanna have something that you don't hate to look at. now. The Orbi, I think, is a little bit outlandish looking. The reason I kept this was due to the performance. I didn't care what it looked like. But there are a bunch of different options out there that can be aesthetically pleasing. Google has one that's nice little circular nodes. Lynx is developed, has these nice rectangular towers. So consider that, right? That goes for this too. This might not suit everyone's taste. This is a bit of a, an angular, very gamer looking router. It's got RGB on it, which is totally unnecessary, but to be honest, I kind of like it. But again, it might not suit everybody's taste. So I like the look of this. I'm always a fan of black equipment in general. Um, and I will say that it does feel a little bit sturdier, but again, you're not paying for the outside. You're paying for the technology inside of these things. So take that for what you will. This is a purely subjective opinion. You might love this. You might love that, whatever. Don't let that influence the decision, right? Second thing, installation and setup. I have never, ever set up a router that was as easy as this Asus router, period, plain and simple, all right? In terms of a direct comparison, this thing is 10 times easier than the Orbi was, all right? No joke, from unboxing it to having a fully functional network with its own 
uh, passcode, and that includes downloading the app over my cellular network or cellular data and uh, going through the installation steps on the app. It took five minutes, maybe five minutes. It was that quick. The Orbi, on the other hand, definitely takes a little bit longer. The app is slower, number one. Number two, you have to create a Netgear account to even get into the app and start your setup, which I thought was super annoying. And then it does take a while for you to place your nodes throughout the house, your satellites, and have them connect. So there is that. Ease of installation, a thousand points to, to the Asus router over, over Orbi, for sure, all right? Second is going to be the app. Okay, both of these have what I would consider to be good apps. The software on them is fine. It works good. Uh, it gives you everything you need, meaning on both apps, you can very easily change your Wi-Fi name and password. You can go in and see what devices are connected. You can check the uh, usage of every device. You can see your uh, upload and download speeds that are coming in from your internet service provider. They definitely do all the basics that you would need an app to do. Here's where they differ a little bit. And this is just from my experience. Maybe I didn't dig deep enough into these apps, but just from the surface, from what you can see when you swap around the menus, here's the main differences I found. Orbi allows you to set up a guest network super duper easily. All right, you're talking, you click a button and you have a guest network and a, a temporary passcode that you can share with anybody. So if you have people coming over, like you're doing a draft at your house or whatever it may be, you can share that with people so you don't have to worry about giving them your main passcode, which I, I definitely liked about that, all right? This, I couldn't find a guest network setting anywhere on it. Maybe you can do it if you plug it in directly to your computer, you know, 192.168.1.1, whatever it may be, but not directly from the app, all right? Where this app shines, though, is the bullshit-free experience that you get while using it. What I mean by that is you don't have to make an Asus account. You don't have to log into the router itself. You don't have to pay for anything. That's something that pisses me off about Netgear, all right? This thing comes standard with security. Both of these have kind of just a standard security, right? But on the Asus router, you can have security and parental controls for no extra charge. Whereas Netgear, you get a trial of each and then you have to pay. For both of those, it's $170 a year, which I think is just bullshit when you consider the initial price that you pay for these anyways, all right? I can understand having some sort of super special extra features that maybe you pay a low monthly subscription fee for, which you, you can pay monthly, but still, I thought that was such a cop out that you already have such an expensive upfront cost. You know, when I bought this, it was $500, but you want me to pay an extra $100 a year for parental controls? No, that's insane to me, right? And then the other big difference that this one had, it does look uh, gamer-y, right? And it does come equipped with some pretty cool gaming features. Now, one of the features on there is basically turning it into a mobile gaming beast. I never use that. I will never use that. I don't do any sort of mobile gaming that would require that, okay? But what it did have that was really cool was automatic port forwarding, which should help provide a more stable connection, right? So the example I'm gonna use here is Destiny 2. Destiny 2, I had an issue with the Orbi where I was constantly getting disconnected. I would get the weasel error code two to three times a night when I would play, it drove me up a freaking wall, right? Well, with the Asus router, you're able to go into the app, select a game from the list of like hundreds, if not thousands of games long, select that game, select port forwarding, and maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. But back in the day, that's what I used to have to do manually when I had uh, like an old school router. Uh, and, it, and it did help with some games. So I think that's a cool feature that they added in there. Personally, I wish that all routers had that because, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people play games these days, right? So that's, that's it for the software. I, I definitely prefer Asus, the Asus app on my iPhone versus the Netgear Orbi. There's no doubt about that. But they're both usable. Don't let that deter you from anything, right? If parental controls are a huge deal for you, then, then maybe consider something else besides Netgear, unless you're okay paying that extra monthly subscription, all right? Um, in terms of the performance of these, which is, in my opinion, the absolute most important part, all right? What I found was that when I lived in a 3,000 square foot, two-story home with 15 to 20 devices connected at all times, and that's, that's, that's no joke either. There were three cell phones, two TVs, two fire sticks, two iPads 
We had two smart thermostats, one upstairs, one downstairs, a smart doorbell, the smart freaking front door lock, baby monitors. I mean, this thing was just perfect for it. Like that, that's why I, I, I reviewed it so well back in September of 2020. I loved it. It handled everything like an absolute champ. I had one located downstairs in my office, the other one located upstairs in my bedroom, and it was seamless. I had perfect coverage inside and outside of the house, okay? And that's where this thing shone. However, once I got divorced and had to move into a smaller house, which is the one I'm currently living in, 1,850 square feet, I tried to set this up in a relatively similar configuration, which was the main router in the office and the satellite in the bedroom. And I ran into problems right away, all right? The TV in the den would constantly disconnect from the internet. I would be in the middle of streaming a movie or a TV show and boom, it would cut off, internet disconnected. I would check my phone, check my computer. Well, sure enough, I'm still connected to the internet, right? So I would either have to restart the TV or reconnect it to the internet using the uh, Samsung wizard. It drove me nuts. This wasn't one or two times a month. It was, you know, it was one or two times a week. So I was worried that my TV was, was crapping out on me, which was a bummer because it was still relatively new, right? The second thing was I would be in my kitchen or in my office and go to the bedroom and browse Reddit or watch YouTube and it would be insanely slow. So I would go into the Orbi app and check and sure enough, my phone was still connected to the router in the office. It didn't swap to the satellite in the bedroom even though we were 10 feet away from it, right? So that was a little bit weird. Third thing, I would occasionally get notifications that certain smart devices were disconnected from the internet. Now I would go into it and sure enough, it'd still be there, but I still got that notification, especially from the Ratio, which is a, a smart uh, sprinkler system. So again, don't know if that was kind of the similar problem that I was experiencing with the TV or what, but the final straw came when one morning I just couldn't get anything to work. And that's when I decided I'm done with this. I'm gonna go out and try something different. I just went on bestbuy.com and checked and saw, hey, this is a $200 router, over a thousand reviews, 4.7 stars. Let's go try it out. And I fully expected when I bought this that I would be returning it later on, getting the Orbi to work again, or, or maybe looking at a, a different mesh system, whatever. But the performance of this thing has been so phenomenal that it kinda, I was just, I, I love it. I, I'm not swapping back. I, I have no reason to, because this does as good of a, if not a better job than the Orbi was doing, because I no longer have any devices disconnecting ever, period. I have 100% coverage inside of this house and good coverage outside of the house. So I can go all the way to the back side of my fence and walk out. I live, I live, I back up to a green belt. I can go out onto that green belt and I'm still getting 20 megabit per second download speeds. I pay for 400. But for it to be going through that many walls, brick wall, my garage, and to be that far away, color me impressed, all right? I, I, I recorded a short little clip of me going from the office to my bedroom I'm still getting above the speed that I pay for in the bedroom, right? So it does exactly what I need it to for this house. I have maybe eight to 10 devices connected nowadays, right? I've got two computers, two cell phones, two iPads, the, the front doorbell, the, the, the sprinkler system, the, uh, the AC, right? So I've got all, all those things connected and everything still works just fine. The problem is I have no idea. I can't stress test it for you. So I, I wish I could tell you more about, hey, if you live with four other people in a 2,000 square foot home and everybody has five devices, how is this gonna hold up? I don't know, but I can tell you that if you live in at least a 2,000 square foot home, this thing's gonna cover it very easily, even if you have it set in the corner of the house, all right, which is super important to me, all right? So, long story short, I'm never going to be returning this, uh, and it really did open my eyes up to the fact that the Orbi, was just too much. It had turned into overkill. My, what was going on, so I, after I went through all these problems, swapped back to a traditional router and started looking online, what I found was that a lot of my problems were caused by the fact that my devices couldn't decide whether to connect to the router or the satellite because both were putting out such a powerful signal that it was just too much. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can say it was too much for the device, but it just couldn't decide which one to connect to, right? So that's the problem I was running into. And that's my theory, I'm sticking to it, simply due to the fact that once I swapped to a traditional router, never had a single issue again, period, plain and simple, right? So maybe that's anecdotal, I don't know, maybe I just got lucky as coincidence, but I don't think so, all right? What I think is that traditional routers are freaking badass nowadays, right? The days of, 
the days of these things, you know, thinking that these suck because maybe they did back in 2014, those are gone, all right? This is still a, an affordable traditional router. There are some that cost more than this, right? And Wi-Fi 6 is awesome. So again, if you're on the fence, if you don't know which one to buy, I would strongly recommend trying out something like this first. And if it doesn't work for you, then look into mesh. Don't start with mesh and work your way backwards like I did. Um, it's costly, all right? Mesh is expensive. You can pay less for mesh, but you're not gonna be paying for kind of the top-notch stuff, right? So if you have, again, wrapping this all up, if you have a massive house and a ton of devices, absolutely look into buying a mesh system. But if you don't, traditional router might work fine for you. And if you need a traditional router, go out and buy this one because it's freaking awesome. Cannot recommend it enough, all right? So that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I hope that it helped in some way, shape, or form if you were on the fence about this and we're just trying to make a decision about which router to buy, all right? Um, leave any questions, comments, concerns in the section below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Give me some feedback so I know what I can do better on the next one. Hope you all have a great rest of the week. Talk to you next time.